Tony Vitello had some comments afterwards. Um, and every coach does this, okay? Every coach loves to do this. It's us against the world. It's us against the world. Well, two years ago, Tennessee was able to do that because they were kind of jerks or jack wagons or whatever you want to call them. And they, they were they were your jerks, and he loved them, and you should. But they, they had the uh, celebrations, and they were giving the one-finger salute to other players, maybe umpires at times. Patello said this group seems to stick together. Quote, I'm sure anti-Tennessee people will argue, but there's a certain maturity there over the course of nine innings with all the teams that can happen in a game. Two-part question. Is the anti-Tennessee thing still out there? Maybe in Vitello's mind, but it is out there in baseball circles. And in part two, poor journalism, but Caleb can handle it. Is this team mature? I'll give you my latter answer first. I think they're very, very mature. And that was evident Friday night and the way they handled business on Sunday. So two questions for Caleb, sir. Yeah, they're much more mature. They're much more. They're they're very mature. I think many of them were burned by. I mean, the program itself was so burned by two years ago. That level of humiliation can be, be very maturing in a certain in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, I guess the best comparison you could have is 2011 LeBron when he first went to Miami and said, "We're not going to win five or six or seven. We're going to win all these rings," and they could flame out and lose to Dallas in the NBA Finals. But it was the best thing that ever happened to him because then he came back and won back to back Finals, Finals MVPs. Was so much better the next couple of years. I think. Things like that do humble you. The anti-Tennessee bias, I think on social media, a lot of it's there. This is a two-way street, guys. Vault Twitter, to their credit, will go to bat for Tennessee like nobody else goes to bat for their program. And you should do that. That's what makes a program great. You, If you're a program, you want that level of passion, right, Dave? Absolutely. But – this the backlash is going to be what comes with it. So we start with Friday. I mean, we all know of uh, the controversial did Blake Burke go or not on Friday against Florida State. And for those who weren't paying attention, it was two strikes, two outs, bottom of the ninth. Tennessee's down 11 to nine. Blake Burke on the next pitch, check swings. And many people thought he went. And it's a judgment call by the ump. If I were I'm making a judgment call, I want to interrupt you for a second. Because you you know I was an umpire for like six or seven years, right? Did not know <laughs> that, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was an umpire. Uh, it's the way I got through uh, high school and college. So um, I didn't even think he was close to going around, which speaks to your point, because everybody said he went around and on Twitter that wasn't a Tennessee fan. And good for you, Vitello. Play up the anti-Tennessee thing. Because is it still out there? Yes, it is. There's some people sitting in, in those broadcast booths or in that press box thinking, you know, those balls or those jack wagons from two years ago, I kind of hope they lose. I guarantee you that is happening with some people, Caleb. And play it up. It's not as strong, but it's still there. And don't think some of these from the Blue Bloods. That's why I have trouble with some Kentucky basketball fans. From the blue bloods of college baseball, they'll say, yeah, that up-and-coming Tennessee team, even though they're 30 years deep, and you said even deeper, making the College World Series, they got what they deserved. There will be some people that say that. Will they're not? Yes. That's okay. I'm gonna, I, I want to get back to what I was talking about for a second because it ties into Tennessee fans. But just to, as a side note, that's what they said about the Miami 80s teams, right? I mean, the Miami 80s teams were no – I mean – the re they came across as very arrogant, but wasn't their whole thing was we're taking on the college football establishment that doesn't want us to be here. Yep. And yeah. And, and, you know, the Notre Dame fans of, Oh, how dare Miami run up the score on Notre Dame. So I missed the voice. <laughs> we win classly. And then of course, Penn state of all schools going victory with honor. That was their phrase. Victory with honor. Okay. Penn state. Um, yeah. So I, totally think Tennessee is playing that role. Now, where the hip hop, where some people will say the hypocrisy comes in, and Dave, let me just play a little devil's advocate. Because, again, to finish this, basically the ump ruled that he didn't check swing, next hit, which would have ended the game, but he ruled it a ball, next hit, Burke gets a hit, drives in two runs, and then Tennessee goes and wins 12-11. to 11. 
So the reason that's kind of relevant is, um, Dave, I want to throw this at you. A lot of Tennessee fans were saying, even if he went, there were missed calls throughout the game that happened. And there were some, there were a couple of ball the, the ump had an, I don't know if you noticed Friday, the ump had an insanely wide strike zone and then yeah. had a narrow one on Sunday. He did. And yeah. So it does go both ways. However, people brought up that Tennessee fans weren't ha- weren't willing to say that when they pelted rest with mustard bottles in the Ole Miss football game a couple of years ago. And now I will defend Tennessee fans and say they pelted refs off. People think they pelted it off a bad spot on the final call. There were about seven missed calls that game that went against Tennessee in the football game. And that's why they were so angry. And that was just the final breaking point. However, I, I just want, want it out there. People think fall Twitter is hypocritical for saying missed calls happen in this instance but them being the same fan base that threw mustard bottles on the field three years ago. Uh, I, I'm, I'll go back to that call. I'm a little surprised that Tennessee got that call because that's, I've been in that position on third baseline or, and, or first baseline. You you can be in that position if it's a right handed batter. And that's a tough call to make. <laughs> I mean, that's a tough call because you're, you're the head umpire called it a strike. And that's really difficult to overturn that guy. They don't like to be overturned. And I thought, I mean, like as a former umpire, it's going through my head. I'm like, he's going to challenge it and he's not going to get it. And I didn't think they were going to get it. And they got it. It's good for them because it was the right call. Rick Terry Jewelry Design, that's your right call. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, the Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com. Check it out right up there. We have everything displayed. Can you see the... Can you see the necklaces now, Caleb? You've been gone a, a, a while and, and dealing with babies, so I don't know if they're sleeping in the eyes. I see the necklaces. <laughs> okay, we, got the, we got the cufflinks right there. Brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry. They want to be your jeweler. Looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals at Tennessee Tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com. Now, on the flip side, I'm going to argue with myself, which you're not supposed to do in public. But as I argue with myself, I see you've got a Chris Burke in the booth. And the other guy whose name suddenly escapes me seems to really respect Tennessee's ability to hit. I almost think that Tennessee's a little bit of a a favorite among the viewing audience because they hit a lot of home runs and they've told that big park that, hey, doesn't matter. We can still hit home runs. I almost think instead of, I play it up, Tony Vitello, but I don't think there's an anti-Tennessee bias. In fact, I think there's a positive Tennessee bias. I mean, he wasn't hired by Danny White, but Tony Vitello, nobody fits the mold of a Danny White type of hire than Tony Vitello. Like, it, I think a, a few years from now, Dave, we're going to shock fans when they when some people first pick up Tennessee and we're like, you know, Vitello wasn't hired by Danny White because this guy is all about offense and fun and entertainment. And that's exactly the direction White goes with his hires. I, I'm kind of with you. And, and it's not just because of the home runs. They put a lot of balls in play because data shows this, by the way. One of the oldest lies in sports, one of the biggest lies in sports history is that chicks take the long ball. The long ball is a part of what's sexy in baseball. But it's chicks actually – big pic- pitchers too. So I can't speak all of yes. a sudden, but I will tell you from a personal experience, losing a girl to a pitcher. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So what I was going to say was that it's been a lot different. If you think about it, and this is the truth with baseball, a ball in play is much more fun to watch than a home run. Like a ball, you know, a ball hit a line drive down the left field line that hits the wall, sends two or three runners home, and you want to see if the third runner is going to get thrown out. That's more fun to watch than a home run. And Tennessee does that very well. That's how they came back and won on Friday. So I think that Tennessee baseball is in a great position right now. And you're right. They get past North Carolina on Sunday. They should absolutely embrace the villain role. And even if it's not there, I mean, what, what was it Michael Jordan used to do? He used to like create reasons to have a chip on his shoulder and tell himself that people don't like him. I do that all the time. That's, that's like my thing. Uh, I think Dylan nailed it. We're just flashy and some people take it as cockiness and others see it as confidence. Dylan, I think you're absolutely right with this year's team. Not two years ago though, Caleb, right? No, not two years ago. Two years ago, seemed was absolutely cocky. Throwing the middle finger to the camera when you hit a home run. I mean, like that's that's not like that's not challenging the norms of baseball. That's just I'm going to openly be a pos.